Hey everyone, Jif Slater here, and today I'm going to walk through what I think are the three biggest updates that are shipped in Firefox 70. Now, there's a lot of big changes around improving privacy uh, for everyone who's using the browser and improving performance, and I think the best way to show that is to have a side-by-side -side with Firefox 69 and Firefox 70. So the first thing you're going to see here is a brand new uh, Firefox logo, which I think looks fantastic. Um, it's on the right side, that's Firefox 70, and you'll see not only has the logo been uh, streamlined, um, it's uh, the, the color palette has been deepened as well with a deeper purple, and I think it looks brilliant. So the first major feature that I really like out of the three is the Firefox uh, privacy report. So if we go to google.com on both of these browsers, you'll notice some changes in the awesome bar. So on the left side, um, you'll see that the uh, lock icon that shows you if the connection is secure is green and kind of bright. Uh, on the right side, it's been uh, turned to a muted gray. And I think this is because there's a trend going on now, especially with the introduction of Let's Encrypt, which is a free certificate authority um, that more and more websites are encrypted by default. So that means you don't necessarily need to call out that, it, that it's uh, got the common set in, right? It's th this is more to say if it's not encrypted, uh, just HTTP connection um, that other people can snoop on, then Firefox will show you a much stronger warning. Um, and I'm not sure if they do that if I just go to yahoo.com. Let's try that. I think there might be a redirection here. Yep, there's a redirection. So I can't show it right now, but you will know if you're not connected securely. The second major change they've made to the awesome bar is if you look at the drop down of the, the properties drop down or the info drop down, there's it's broken into three parts here: the connection status, the content blocking information, as well as the permissions. But on on Firefox 70, there's a much bigger change to show you uh, how you're being protected as you're browsing the web, as well as on the specific website. So for this specific website, uh, google.com, no known trackers were detected on the page. And if you continue to browse the web, you'll even see um, a breakdown of your uh, of Firefox's enhanced tracking protection across your entire browsing history. So um, as this is a new profile, I don't have any entries here, but you can see it's split up into the four major categories that uh, Mozilla feels are the, are the ones that are most important. So we have social media trackers from the likes of, say, Facebook or Twitter. We have cross-site tracking cookies. So this isn't cross-site cookies. They haven't, in the standard profile, those aren't going to be blocked. But in, the, but in this profile, um, it's only tracking cookies that are cross-site will be blocked. You have fingerprinters and you have crypto miners. Now, um, I think this is a very good breakdown. I think this draws a lot from some of the other popular ad blocking extensions such as uBlock Origin or AdBlock Plus uh, that show you a breakdown of, of your um, safety. There's also, um, you know, DNS based ad blockers like PyHole that have very nice graphs and show you how many trackers have been blocked. I think that uh, people are becoming more aware of this, and I think Mozilla did a good job to identify that and to make sure that the browser uh, reinforces its image of protecting you as you browse the web. So I think that's really important. And if you're signed into a Firefox account, there's a couple callouts that will be here. So if any of the passwords were exposed in data breaches, um, I think they look by username, not necessarily password. Uh, it will show here, as well as Firefox lockwise. So this is a big improvement to the logins and passwords feature on Firefox 69. So on the left you get a uh, kind of it, it fits in the theme of like the bookmarks and history managers um, that just shows you your uh, passwords. But if we go to logins on Firefox 70, now it's a much more comprehensive experience um, and I think that is a natural evolution of this as you start syncing your passwords and logins across all your devices. Um, I think there is a Firefox Lockwise app for iOS and Android. I'll have to check on that. That lets you um, sync these across devices, which is very important. 
especially with this new feature called um, Secure Password Generation. So if I pretend I'm going to create a Gmail account here or Google account on both browsers, if you right click in the password field and click full password, in Firefox 69 the default is just to save login, but in Firefox 70, oh it actually showed it straight away, a left click in the box will generate a secure password straight away for you and it will also put it in the confirm box as well when you go to click in there. So that's really useful, um, especially when combined with password syncing, because now you don't need to remember a password and it can be secure. So in the event of a single breach, it's not gonna destroy uh, your profile across multiple accounts. So I would say that's a really good first start for Firefox with the enhanced track and protection combined with Lockwise. Now the second coolest change is the some of the uh, developer tool and updates. So let's go to the New York Times for this example. You will see, uh, so if we open up developer tool in both of these, yep, here it is on the right side and the left side. So on the initial load of the developer tool, there's no change you'll see straight away here, but there are some CSS updates. So um, if I was to set the color of the body to aqua and do the same on Firefox 70, the color dropper now tells you about the contrast of your selection. So this is very useful when trying to pick the best color um, within your color scheme and, and make sure that if people are using say high contrast or um, have their brightness settings done differently than, than your monitor, uh, they're not gonna have issues to, to read the text or, or see the, the color that you've selected. So I think that's very important. Also in this uh, inspector here, I'll see if I can find one. Um, any CSS that is not active because it's not used or it's overridden is shown uh, is shown here. So for example, this vertical align element has no effect and it tells you why. And I think that's very helpful because a lot of times you'll see CSS that has um, set has properties that don't make any effect and uh, it's just extra CSS. So you can get rid of that or use it correctly if what you intended is not happening. A second major change I've made for developer tooling is around accessibility. So if we go to accessibility here on both sides and you go to the issue checker dropdown, you'll find that now it checks the page to see which elements are, might not be um, accessible via keyboard. So uh, you can imagine that you have carrot browsing turned on and you're browsing with the arrow keys and you're tabbing across elements. Well, some elements may not be accessible and this could be bad when people are using um, alternate input methods like screen readers, where the screen reader interacts with the page using uh, either the keyboard or inspecting the DOM directly. So I think that's a big win. Um, now, I wouldn't say that every error that you'll get here is necessarily means your page is not accessible. Uh, it, it's, it's still a beta feature. There's still some work to be done here. But I think um, bringing that forward to letting uh, web developers know more about how accessible their page is uh, will, will in turn make them focus more on making their page more accessible. So I think that's a, a big update there. And finally, uh, the third major update, so number one was the, um, the enhanced tracking protection with Firefox Lockwise. Number two is some of the developer tooling updates. Number three, I think, would be performance. Now, I can't show you directly here, but um, on Windows, more and more of the users have been shipped WebRender. So WebRender is part of the Firefox Quantum update uh, that wasn't shipped entirely. This is the last piece of it that lets um, rendering be much faster, especially on Intel, CP Intel CPU GPU combos, so the, the Intel HD graphics, the built-in ones. And then on Mac OS, Mac OS, they've really improved the power consumption, so that means they've really reduced it by uh, in better integrating Firefox with core animation framework. 
So I don't think it's better than Chrome. Oh, I think it's rather close to Chrome's consumption. It's definitely, like, if you're really concerned about power consumption, stick with Safari for now. But it has improved a lot, and I think that you'll you'll find that you'll be more comfortable using Firefox while you're not connected to a power source. So those are the major updates for Firefox. I think that uh, Mozilla's done an excellent job of, of keeping the, the train rolling here and really shipping updates all the time. I think they have a lot more cool stuff planned in the future, but for now I think everyone should upgrade to Firefox 70 and uh, enjoy the updates. So if you like this video, give it a like, hit subscribe, and let me know in the comments if you'd like me to look at some other browsers. All right, thanks.